Welcome to the table tonight, and we have two very special guests with us. Um, we have Brittany, who is, I've been talking about Brittany for a long time. She's normally behind the scenes with the lights and the sounds, and tonight she's at the table. And so um, I'm excited for you to hear her story and hear her healing and um, excited for what the Lord is going to do in Brittany's life. And then right here is my mini-me. This is my daughter, um, and this is a little little rough for me to to talk and hear and stuff but listen everything that satan throws at us is meant to destroy us and he's he's meant to destroy our family and so i'm glad that i'm on this side of it talking about it that you know he has been that she's been delivered uh, just like myself and everybody else Brittany, she's been delivered and able to talk about it now um, but it is something that goes on and that is our mental health and we don't talk about it a lot because it it's feely and you know, it's it just, ugh. yeah, it's very hard to talk about. And so um, we don't even really know what to say. Lisa and I, I think we've struggled a little bit um, learning about self-harm because that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, because when we were growing up, no one really did anything like that. And, you know, I mean, I was born in 76. Me too. You know, okay, so, I mean, we're not, I'm 47, so it's like we're not too, too old, but... These are just some of the new things that are coming up that we just ignore as parents uh, or as youth leaders or as pastors. And um, so we want to bring the light. Or even that you just don't recognize that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, A lot of times I think that um, I just didn't think it would happen to my my kid, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, others others that I've heard are close friends and family. They have went and and been through that, but like you don't ever think that it's going to happen in your home under your (laughs) watch. And so, but that's what Satan does. He wears you down Mm -hmm. and he comes after not just you, he comes after your whole family. And so um, we're going to talk a little bit about self-harm tonight. And what I mean about self-harm is um, self-harm can be anywhere from uh, cutting or burning, the kids burning their self with cigarettes or lighters, uh, there's uh, salt, um, there is uh, erasers that mm-hmm. they can just keep doing. They can pick their skin, they can bite their skin. Um, there's so many ways. Some kids do it with rocks. And, I mean, I've heard all of it since I've been um, doing this, but mainly the cutting is razor blades, scissors, knives, um, and that is, for me, it is so foreign, and I can't really understand it. And so it, it's so good to bring you two to the table to where you can kind of shed some light because the majority of the teenagers that are out there now, if they're going to um, do something to mask their hurt, normally it's either going to be drugs or it's going to be cutting. Uh, cutting is very crazy right now in our teenagers. And I don't think that us parents are prepared or even ready to admit that that it is a it could be a problem in your home so um the I've I've really had to study today on like what it is and and why like I was like what can cutting do because like for most people we're we run away from pain you know Mm -hmm. we don't want to be stung by a bee or bit by a snake or you know step on a rock step your toe or whatever but the more I research this this is just like uh, like my addiction to pain medication, I'm masking a hurt. And until you get to the root of the hurt, you're never going to be able to lay down the mask. And so um, it's caused Carly and I to uh, have more conversation about like what was the root of the problem. And that's kind of like what we're going to start out with. Um, and I'm so glad that she's in a place now where you all can talk about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, even now that we're here, we're on the other side of it, out of it, you may find yourself right in the middle of the storm where you, where you just have found out that your child is cutting or self-harming and you don't know what to do. And so we're going to try to like, um, I'm going to try to tell you what, what the, what the doctors say, which I don't necessarily think that the therapist or the doctors really have a good grasp on it because I don't think that we um, approach it correctly. And Brittany's got a couple little examples 
of how it's been approached. I know I didn't, when I first found out with Carly, I was angry. I was like, oh, she just wants attention. You know, that was my biggest thing because it was like a denial thing. It made me, it made it easier for me to accept if I, if I said she was looking for attention because I really didn't want something to be mentally wrong with her. And so, uh, but now that I'm, we've walked through it and, and she really did, she did it on her own. I mean, and the Holy Spirit, we talk about it because I was, I was, I was, doing my own thing in my own darkness, trying to get out of my own pit. And um, so there's some guilt in, um, of me not being there for her. Mm-hmm. But I realized in my own, nobody could have been there for me either other than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is who you want. You don't want anybody else because they're going to say the wrong thing and they're going to do the wrong thing and they're going to give you the wrong advice where the Holy Spirit meets you right where you are and he's understanding and he's Full of grace and and I know you were praying for her. Yes, anyway, I was. I was. So. That's that's the thing about it, and that's what the that's what the Holy Spirit has really told me was like, you know, Christy, you were there. You mm-hmm. were. You might not have been there with her, helping her in, in those dark moments, but I was outside on my battlefield praying for all my children, mm-hmm. um, and so. I just recommend that you, it may not be cutting for your child. It may be drugs or it may be something else. Uh, but if you pray for your children faithfully, they will come out of it. They really will. The Holy Spirit is faithful and, and he is going to walk them through it. And, and it just makes her stronger and Brittany stronger. You have to get out of it with him. There's no nobody else that can bring you out of it. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. What about you, Brittany? I agree. Yeah. So, and it, at first, it's hard to get out of the pit. I mean, you're literally climbing out with everything you got. You are battling. It is a battle. for You know, Satan comes for us for our mind and our soul, and it is a battle, and a lot of us just turn a blind eye to it. So, um, you want to start out with the first question about, we're just going to kind of go from the beginning, and then we're going to talk about the ugly, and then we're going to try to end with how they got out and how mm-hmm. you can get help and, and things like that. So so the, the first question that we wanted to ask was like, was there a certain situation that triggered this? Um, were you exposed to it in some way maybe that you had the idea of cutting and then there was something that maybe happened that you were like, oh, I remember that I, that was um, a way of coping and let me try that. So um, I was introduced was, uh, by a friend in middle school. Um, Middle school. That's crazy. Middle That's very young. I was. I have a middle schooler. How old was I? In middle school. 12? 12, 13. Yeah. yeah. Lindley's eighth grade, and so she's yeah. 13. So, um, she was, we were just talking one day, and I had, was, I was bullied my entire life because of my weight. Um, and I was just tired of feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, so she had talked to me about it, and I was like, well, we'll see, you know, kind of, eh, but that, it was always in the back of my mind. Um, it wasn't until the summer before my freshman year, uh, we had a really big family thing happen um, the, where we didn't know we were going to make it out alive. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a whole different Ball story. Game, yeah. yeah. Um, so I had remembered in the back of my head, it was still there. It's like, you know, just pick up that razor blade, pick up that knife. It will make you feel a ton better. And that's when I started. So I was a turning. My freshman year. So you had a friend who cut, Mm -hmm. and she told you that if you cut, that it would it would feel it would feel better. Yeah, because one thing I did. Yeah, it wasn't wrong. Yeah, because a lot of kids, what the the thing is, is you're looking for a mask of your pain. So the bullying that is so hard for me to hear, Brittany, because I was bullied as well through my school, (laughs) and Carly was bullied until she wasn't, you know, like, you get tired of it, and then it's, I think that's why I'm so bold, and people think I'm mean now, but I'm just tired of people's crap, you know, that's my thing, I'm just done with the bullying, Mm -hmm. and so, um, but that is, that, that's why bullying is such a big deal, because it leads to other things. And so a lot of people, oh, my kid's just smack-talking or whatever. No, yeah. that is not, because he may be smack-talking, but to somebody else, it's real. It's really hard. Yeah. And it's, those words stick with you for the rest of your life. That's right. And I know for me, it stuck with me, and I'm 33, and it's hard to get past what somebody says about you. The old saying, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. That's is, a lie. It's a lie. A lie. Uh, it is. It's, it's very hard. Yes. Yeah. So what about you, Carly? Um, where did you hear the very first about cutting? Like, I wouldn't have even thought that. I would have just thought drugs. But now our kids are being educated in 
how to self-harm to <clears throat> feel better. So I remember Lauren had this friend that was also going through like mental illness and she was trying to help her and I know my family was trying to help her but I remember that one night uh, Lauren got a text and pictures of the girl's wrist and she just kept telling like everybody like my family and she was telling everybody like she needed help and that's where I got the idea of cutting and it always was in the back of my mind like Brittany said. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that is, that's the new thing. That is the new thing. And so when I looked into it today, um, I listened to a bunch of people's testimonies. And um, it, it is, it's said to be like if you are like a marathon runner, um, it's, there's, a, there's a runner's high. And it's the stress of the body. So like when you start out running a marathon, you know, your body's like wore out or whatever. And then so halfway in, this adrenaline kicks in. I can't in. say that I've ever felt that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate running. I do too. I'll never feel that. I can promise. I will never have a runner's high unless something's chasing me. Yeah, you hear me? Exactly. So, um, but it it is like that. And so it is the same things. What did we say it was, Brittany? The, um, it's the only pain you can control when you're self-harming. So you can't control what the environment's doing around you. But you can control the pressure of the cut, the how deep you're going to go, how, why, or how long you want the cut to be. It doesn't, or where you want it to be placed. Like, that's what you can control in that moment. Yeah, and it is an immediate release, is from what I understand. Um, that's why some girls can, um, they can. Well, and I will say that there are boys as well that that cut, but it is mainly girls. Um, we know we know a few that uh, boys who do and. Um, you know, it is. It's always stems from pain and trauma. Maybe, maybe they they've been through horrible things. Um, I would say more for sports guys. I would think that would be easier for them to cut than it would be to fail a drug test. So I think that it is for me. I was looking for the easiest way to not be seen of masking. Mm -hmm. You know, so like pills were easy for me because nobody had to know. Whereas cutting, you can hide it. You know, a lot of people do it on their forearms, inner thighs, and stomach. And then they wear a stack of bracelets. Mm -hmm. Then they yeah. wear a stack of bracelets or long sleeve shirts. Or long sleeves mm -hmm. um, in the summer. Yeah, that was Carly. Yeah. And you get, why are you wearing long sleeves? It's 85 degrees. You're like, I'm cold. Because I'm cold. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it's no an problem. easy, yeah. And everybody just blows it off. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think we need to start paying a little bit more attention to if your child is wearing long sleeves. Um, it, it also talked about, like, their attitude. Um they would withdraw, um, and they were really angry. So I was just looking at things like that, like typical teenager. She was dealing with grief of, of my dad um, dying. And then um, I was just putting that off like, oh, she's just a typical teenager. And I wasn't, like, looking for more war warning signs. A lot of people say you look for bloody tissues in mm -hmm. the trash can. Is that true? No. I never wiped off the no. blood, no. Okay, maybe not. See, I'm telling you, the doctors mm -hmm. and stuff are not right. But looking at your child's arm and stuff. So let's just say that somebody, um, a mom finds, you know, what, what, like, most of the reaction is, oh, my gosh, don't you cut again. And, you know, you're trying to grab all the pointy things. From what I've read and understand is that you can always find pointy things. Oh, for sure. Uh, sticks, anything you can do. Anything. So, so that right is not the answer. Fingernails, Fingernails. yes, Acrylics. scratches. Yeah. So there's ways of getting around it. So just not freaking out is probably yeah. the best thing. And so what would the next step be for like a mom if they? Yeah, like how would you even approach talking to talking to your child about it? I, mean, I wouldn't do it in the middle of a church. <laughs> okay, so that's um, what happened to you. Yeah, that's what happened to me, but. I think each parent is going to be different. I know for my mom, who was the youth pastor for many years, it was hard for her to understand, like, well, what did I do wrong? I was like, there's something that you done wrong, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's just something it's... that I, can, I can't handle. Right. Um, but I don't really have the advice to give because I'm not a mom. But, yeah. I mean, I've... But, you, but an easier approach, a more understanding approach... Not, not yelling at your child and not being like, "Well, you have it so good." Yeah, because yes. that's not. Uh, I, I would. You would, could. Yeah, be, I would tell Carly like, "What do you have to be depressed about? You right. have all this stuff." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, it's, and, and that was the total wrong that's the thing wrong to way say. To go. Yep. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, we want to freak out because we don't want that to happen to our kid. But yet, we have to understand that they hurt just as much as we do. So, um, so Carly, um, share, with you, share with them about how you wanted to get caught. Um, I remember I had recently cut on my arms, and I wore this tie-dye T-shirt downstairs. You know, my, my, my dad was doing dishes, and I was just hoping and praying that he would look at my arms and just be like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know. I just wanted to, them to see it. That way I could get help and just stop because wanted I to wanted be to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to. I just couldn't. It was something that I craved and that I just needed. And I just, it's always just high. Wanted help. And so, like, there's that guilt of where was I? What was I doing? Where, where, you know. But then at that moment, again, I think that you have to be taken to that certain spot of, you know, where you want to quit. Where it, it, it's enough. It's, it's done. There was a time when I was tired of taking pills. You know, and you have to get, I don't want to say hit rock bottom because that's not where you want your kid to be. But um, I heard a, a testimony of a girl today and she said, you know, uh, I'm looking for somebody to trust. I want to trust mm -hmm. somebody. And so, like, if you can't get past the, the wound on my arm, then you'll, you won't accept the ugly that I feel on the inside. And so, like, if you, if you see that your child is cutting, know there's a hurt and, um, you know, I, I, like, we're not therapists. <laughs> we're, this is just the life that we have, we've lived. And, you know, Lisa has had some, some um, things that, along with it that she's had to deal with. And so, like, we're just, we're given our story and what worked for us. There may be, your, your child may be further, I mean, further, like, chronic. Um, a lot of times therapists, you can't even find a good Christian therapist and, and I don't really feel like those therapists that are out there now are even educated in the cutting <clears throat> and self-harm, maybe in the suicidal thoughts. Um, but so let me, tell me the difference between cutting and suicidal thoughts. Do you, like a lot of people, I know that that usually goes hand in hand, but when you're cutting, you're not trying to kill yourself. You're just trying to numb the pain. Right. From, I can only speak on right, myself. Right, right. Um, for me, when I was cutting, it was at that time I just needed to feel some release. But I did get to the point where I was tired and I was wanting to end it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if it wasn't for a friend at school who found my letter, I wouldn't be here today. But so tell us about that if you're comfortable with it. Like you wrote a letter that you were that I was I was done. Like I I was tired of being. It was the letter too. Just in general, just to write it down. Uh, and a lot of people are going to say that suicide is selfish when it's really not. And a lot of people want to label that like that. But it, it, there's nothing selfish about it. You're just tired. You're trying to tire. You're surviving. You're tired. Yeah. You're, you're tired of having to put on a mask every day and being like, hey. I'm good. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But you're not. Um, so, I mean, I'm thankful for the friend who found my letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at, the, at that time, I was very angry, upset. Mm -hmm. Like, I, was, I, wanted, I wanted out. Yeah. And I feel like at that point, not knowing what was happening in my life from then on, like, mm -hmm. I was like, well, now, did that, they tell a teacher been, or yes, your, did they tell a teacher? They told a teacher. Um, and sorry, I'm it's okay. spitting. It's okay. Um, the teacher was, or school counselor, whichever you want to call it, uh, got a hold of my mom, which my mom worked in the school system, so it was kind of awkward there, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, okay. Yeah, Did nothing, but cool. Yeah, and so you did go to therapy, but you didn't feel like that no. helped you at all because no. your therapist wasn't equipped. No, my therapist was not a therapist. She was just like, let me talk to you for 12 minutes, but let me tell you what I did this past weekend. Yeah. yeah. And go from there. Yeah, so that's the hard thing for me. Like Carly would tell me, um, she would say, I, I'm depressed. I need help. And I would I would tell her dad I was like we've got to get her in we've got to get her on medicine because um, I'm I, you know, I wasn't above any of that but finding that good therapist that is you that trust. what she is that what you were wanting a therapist yeah yeah okay. she did and some she, kids don't right want that, they don't want help and they won't go and they won't talk mm -hmm. to anyone they just yeah and so that's that's kind of a with with her I feel like the helping point and it's not to toot my own horn but I hid the word of God in my child's heart mm -hmm. so when it came to being on the battlefield just like with your mom you were able to battle, even though it wasn't pretty right. 
You know what I'm saying? And even yeah. though there was attempts of your life, God intervened. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to understand that. Yeah. God intervened. And he was like, no, this is not what I want for your life. And so um, that is, you know, for me, I just felt like um, I failed her a little bit on, on that part of not getting her in. But I was scared to death of the therapist because they're, they're, they're not everybody is good. And I've heard horror stories mm -hmm. just here in, in where we are anyway. We're in a, in a little country town. And so at that point, um, Randa Bush is a uh, therapist here, and she was Carly's youth leader. And so for me, I rested in that because she was a therapist. And I knew that if Carly really felt like she could she could reach out. And Randa was such a great support for her. Mm -hmm. I mean, she would come to her functions and things mm -hmm. like that. And did you ever speak with Randa about any of that? I remember the first time I went, and it took me forever to go because I just, it's a Wednesday night, who wants to go? Like, I wasn't that. I wanted to go home, take a nap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> take a nap. And <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to sleep. I didn't want to, I just slept. That's all I did was sleep because that's just where I was not in pain and all that. But so I remember I finally went, and not all the cheerleaders were there because I'm a cheerleader and I remember like that n none of them showed up it was only me and two other girls and Brenda brought up um suicide and all that and all three of us that were in that room that showed up all dealt with suicide and depression and cutting and so I got to share my story with them and they looked at me and they just were like you're a cheerleader you why do you feel like that you're gorgeous doesn't matter I just struggled with everything that I went through, and mm -hmm. I got to be like a little role model for them, and it felt good, and then that's why it came on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's about it. One thing I've noticed with her since she has gotten out of this, and today, I mean, she's super happy. I asked her, you know, those are hard questions to ask your kid. Like, have you ever attempted suicide? Do you feel happy today? Those are those are questions that are. You know, you're not ready for the answer. I wasn't ready for the answer, but I, but, but we have to be ready for the answer because if not, I mean, our kids are in battle right now and they're battling by themselves, you know, and they need us to come around them and pray over them and to pray for them and to, and, but I'm just so thankful for Randa because I think that that kind of got us through a, a, a season, not that it healed completely, but Randa was always there on Wednesday nights and Carly, she, she didn't go all the time, but when she did go, she would come home and she would just be so uplifted and encouraged. And so I owe a lot to Randa Bush. Does she know that? Um, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't so. think we, I think we're just now figuring all that out. Sorry. Okay. I think we're just figuring it out. Like today we talked about two of Carly's friends. Um, you want to tell them about your two friends that um, this is kind of like um, who, who uh, knew and were that rock for her, but yet that's a hard place to be as well as a is, teen, as a teen mm -hmm. to, to know that your friend is cutting and you don't know what to do about it. And so go ahead, talk about Megan first and then we'll talk about Madison. Okay. So my best friend's Megan and she just always just got angry and angry and I hated disappointing her. I really did. But it, she just couldn't understand that it took that pain away and she would just shut down, and I hated to see that, but I knew that, you know, it was what helped me at the time, and she just couldn't see that. But um, she did help me through a lot, when, like, whenever I did try to attempt, and she was blow, she would always blow my phone up. Like, if I were to tell her that I loved her just out of the blue, she'd freak out right now. And I hate that, but... She calls and is like, are you okay? Yeah. she's so worried, you yes. know. But she's always been there. She's since day one that's the only friend that I think that I could trust with anything yeah. and I do trust her a lot with everything and she gave you a ultimatum and she right. said and she told me she said if you don't tell your parents then I will and and I'm so thankful for me. Megan <laughs> yeah and she didn't have to tell me because Carly told yeah and and but I, I'm thankful for those friends that are like if you if you know they they love you so much that they tell you the truth and they push you to be better mm -hmm. that's what you do for me and then Madison um I went to school and I would always wear long sleeve well it was summertime and it was hot in the school and I remembered that 
I my cuts were like slowly healing like they were on their like last you know scab up whatever and I took my jacket off and I just kind of like hid my arms you know kind of like not really thinking anything of it and I went to grab my pencil and she saw my arm and grabbed it and just started crying and for me to see her hurt it hurt me mm -hmm. to see that she cared so much because at that time I felt like oh if I were to leave no one would care like I mean they would care but they wouldn't you know I don't know if yeah. for that two minutes just yeah. to make yourself known. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what we talked about today in the pool. I was at, It was hard for me to ask Carly, like, have you ever attempted to take your life? And, um, you know, and it was hard for me to get the answer because it was like, well, what about me? You know, what would you, what, what were you thinking of? What, I mean, I would have been devastated. And she was like, Mom, I wasn't thinking about anybody else but me and her pain. And so... I think that in that it's very selfish for us to think that somebody is always thinking about what somebody else is going to think when right. really they're just trying to survive, you know. Right. And it's like you're trying to survive, but you're tired of surviving. You know, it's like you want help, but you don't. Want but you don't want help. You know, it's 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 so much confusion. And I didn't realize either that your brain, your hormones, can cause that. That is a big thing. So some people who are going through it. Sometimes their brain doesn't produce enough stuff, whatever they call those big words. Serotonin. Yes, all of that stuff. <laughs> dopamine, all that, whatever. And so, therefore, they feel like that's who they are. And, 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 and all the while, they could, have, they could get some medication that could help them or some um, coping, you know, um, tips or something like that. So... You know, it's it's a very hard, like for me, it wasn't hard for me. Like mine is just, I, I knew I had a hurt and I wanted to take a pill. But like, I think cutting takes you guys to a different place because you question who you are and what, it, does God even hear yeah. me? Does he see me? Did you have any things like that? Sure. Let's talk about Shauna for, for a minute. This is, this is what has kept Brittany down. And I'm going to say this real quick. We're in their church. And this is the room that Brittany and Shauna spent all their time in. And Shauna um, was Brittany's best friend, and she was her her Megan that Carly had to help her. So Shauna was that for Brittany, and she was um, taken at a very young age in a car wreck, and Brittany was actually with her. And uh, Brittany survived, and Shauna didn't. And then Brittany had survivor's guilt. I still have survivor's guilt. Yes, you still do. Yeah, so this is still a process, um, and it is, but so for you to be in this room tonight, you were nervous about coming in here, but for me, I want, I, I told you this, that this is full circle, mm -hmm. that she's here, you know, and she's so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, because I remember looking at you a year ago and saying, Brittany, it's been 12 years. It, it, this is not what she wants for you. Yeah. You know, she wants you to live yeah. live for her yeah. you know and now you are yeah. and it may not be totally there yeah. because you know what I'm saying because I know you still struggle mm -hmm. but I've seen just since uh, I met you yeah such a the big biggest difference. difference that God is just moving in your life and that's the same way with Carly I, I look at her and how far she's came and where she is today and her happiness and and she'll uh she said today she was like it has given her compassion for other people who hurt, which is the same heart I have. Mm -hmm. uh, she wants to come and sit in the darkness with somebody who is hurting so they don't hurt anymore. Same as me. I want to come and sit in the darkness because I don't want you to be by yourself like I was. And even though that's hard to hear, um, my husband is saying, I, feel, I hate that you felt like you were alone. I wasn't alone. Jesus was right there with me. And I know Jesus was right there with Carly. And Jesus is right there with you, and he's right there with Lisa. So let's talk about Shauna for a minute and um, how that affected you. And and then what made you say, this is enough? Uh, she just So she just recently had um, the gastric sleeve, and she has lost how much? 125 pounds. 125 pounds. And so that has just really, I think that's what's put the fire under your butt. Like you're getting energy. Yeah, you're changing. Trying. You are. Okay. It's and hard. positive. Uh, uh, one thing with Brittany, she's a very negative thinker. Negative Nancy. <laughs> she is, and I'll it, it, it from drives me crazy. Uh, you know, and I'll just say, no, we're not having that. You're not talking like that about yourself. Um, and I've seen a huge difference in that. Mm -hmm. And there was never a smile, or there was never anything. And and now you just you're blossoming and coming into who God created you to be. 
but it just took you a minute. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a minute, you know? Yeah. So, all right, go ahead and talk about Shauna. Uh, I met Shauna here at church. Um, she was in the sound booth, and then the thing about it was is we hated each other <laughs> because she thought that I got her brother into cutting. Not the case, but that's right, just not the right. point. Um, we eventually was able to talk, um, and then from then, she was my person. Uh, she was the person I went to for everything, and I still wish I could go to her today. Um, she gave me the tough love, but she done it gracefully, if that makes yeah, any sense. Yeah. Um, I always knew that at one point, you know, whenever it, she, if I was just like, hey, she would know in a text or in a text or even on the phone like okay i'm coming let's let's go yeah even if it's at three in the morning we'll go mm -hmm. drive around town look at houses that's mm -hmm. what and we've done that quite a lot um her and my good friend jared um he would held responsible in all this too he would come when she was at work and if i was having a really rough day he would uh, take me out and just get out of the house um they would both go through my room and get the stuff out yeah. Um, now, did that make you angry? Yes. Yeah. It did. But looking back at it now, I know that they done it in love mm -hmm. um, and that they didn't want to see me not be here. Right. Um, and I think now that it just hurts a little bit more because she's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, the survivor's guilt is very bad, uh, as well as the PTSD with it all. Um but you've recently got your driver's license. I did. I got my driver's license. I actually drove out to the cemetery last week. For the first time. For the first time. Um, it was kind of awkward because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Brittany, you're dead. It's cool. <laughs> no. Um, I love her. She, I don't know. It's it's hard. It um, is. It is. I miss her every single day, and it's been 13 years. It'll be 14 in February, and... Not a day goes by that it's hard to... Do you realize what she's doing in heaven right now? Yeah, I know, but it doesn't make it easier. It doesn't. It easier. doesn't make it easier. It doesn't. But you know, that's, I always say that with the, for the joy. That's why Jesus came, because he knows one day she's going to be standing there waiting on you. I just hope I make her proud. Like that's You the, are making her proud. I, I mean, like... My uh, friend who's in the car with us, and I've known that girl since she was eight years old, I said, I drove out to the cemetery, and I said, I just hope I make her proud. Well, you and are. So it's it's hard. Yeah. Um, and that's day by day, you know. Oh, sure. That's day by day. And but you are doing everything like getting your driver's license, you know, making your health better. Um Being speaking on this about podcast. Your, yes. yes. I mean, if you just I I've known I mean, you've worked for me. So what was the very first? No. It was a long time ago. But and I'll tell you ago. what. Shauna actually filled out an application and like a week before Mm -hmm. that she passed away and I dealt with guilt with that because I felt like if I would have hired her if I would have seen her application and hired her then she wouldn't have been on the road that day so yeah. I went through a little bit of so, that the Friday before the accident was the Valentine's party and my sister was had her little party and Shauna came um, to 303 that yeah. was Leisha's room and she helped with the Valentine's party then we left and got her senior pictures not knowing that that was the last photos that I would ever have with her um, and because it was also a youth conference that night here, so it's just a lot. A lot, yeah, it is. And it, and if you, but if you don't, it's a lot. But if you don't deal with it, yeah. If you don't lay it at the feet of Jesus, it's going to stay yeah. a lot. And and the thing about it is, is there are so many people that are listening that have de that are dealing with survivor's mm -hmm. guilt, or they're dealing with some of the stuff that you've talked about or some of the stuff you talked about. I mean, that's why that's why we tell our testimony. It's not that we want to be like, oh, because we're not so proud of the things yeah. we've done. Uh, but there's no shame and guilt that live there anymore because... And I think bringing awareness to this uh, is going to help so many people. Yeah. And then hearing your all story is going to be so encouraging. Yeah. And that's one thing about being at this table and that's given me is the encouragement and the support. And everybody needs that. That's right. That's right. And the thing about it is, is like educating the moms... And yeah. the and the people watching, or the sisters, or or the friends that they know their friends are cutting. Um, so so like today, I told Lindley. I, Lindley was out there too, and this just shows you that we don't know everything that we're supposed to say. And so I was like, Lindley, do you know of any of your friends? Because she's middle school, and she's like, no, which she's clueless anyway. Like she just she just does her thing. 
And I was like, well, if you ever see any spots or scratches on your friend's hands, you know, you just ask them, what did I say? Like, what is that? Or whatever. And Carly, Carly's like, no, don't ask them that. You just say, you know, if you need to talk, I'll be there. Yeah. You know, something like that. So, like, I'm learning so much from being here, you know. Um, and it is hard. It's been, we've had people for so long want us to talk about cutting and depression and anxiety and, um, but it's just hard. Well, and it's good to know that, um, you don't want to just ignore it, you know, like Carly, she was so glad that her friends recognized it and, um, and didn't encourage her, but supported her, right. um, in doing the right thing mm -hmm. and talking to you all. So, yeah. And I mean, you know, I was just kind of looking up some of the things that would, that the psychiatrist and stuff say that. Um, let me find it here, um, that causes them, like what, what causes you to want to hurt or want to cut, and a lot of it is, um, you know, they don't feel accepted at school. They don't Hopeless. fit in. Yeah. They're, they don't like what they look like. Um, even a test, a final exam, can be a lot of pressure on them to... Meeting expectations. Meeting yeah. expectations. So, like, we have to kind of step back for a minute. And I think we're just so busy going everywhere. We've got our phone. We can we can watch movies. We can do whatever. And we're, we're missing it. We're mm -hmm. missing the real battle that's going on. Satan is coming for our kids, whether you want to believe that or not. I mean, he comes at them with their gender. He's coming at them with cutting. He wants to destroy the younger generation. And I don't, I don't really know why. I really believe that it's because Jesus is about to come back, and he is trying to take out as many people as he can. So if let's talk about how you all got out of it. Um, and, you know, we can, let's talk about suicide first just for a minute because I, I know we've, we've covered cutting. We need to talk about suicide. Um, how... How would you, what would you say that you needed in that moment when you wanted to end? Was there nothing that, that was going to help? It was just you? It was just me. It was just I you. I was just tired. You were tired. I, I didn't want to feel, I didn't want to breathe, I didn't want to, like, I just wanted to be gone. Yeah. There, I don't think there's anything. But you're thankful point. now that you're here? Yeah, some days. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? I'm doing better. You are doing better. You I'm are. better. Uh, it's just a lot. It and, is a and, lot. I don't know. A lot of people want to say that suicide is selfish, and it's not. Yeah. You know, you're but not thinking about But do you see that God has a work for you? Can you see that? Sometimes. This is part of it. This yeah. is it. Yeah. This is it. <clears throat> Satan wanted you off this earth, yeah. both of you. Mm -hmm. And it's because he has a mighty work for both of you. Mm -hmm. And and telling your story is, most people don't want to do that. Everybody's like, Christy, why do you live your life out loud? Because I'm a living sacrifice. This is what right. the Lord has called me and everybody, a living sacrifice. That's what he wants. Um, and so that means good times, bad times. You know, everybody don't want to, don't want people to th know, you know, I'm going through that when they're going through it too. There's not anybody who doesn't have a hurt that doesn't have a mask. Everybody is right now just surviving. They're either drinking too much because they're because this world is crap. So they're drinking too much. They're doing drugs. They're eating too much. They're shopping too much. They're gambling too much. They're watching porn too much. Mm -hmm. they, they're having too much sex because they can't stay uh, faithful to their spouse. There's some, there's, all of us are a hot mess. And until we lay it down at the feet of Jesus and say, I don't understand this. Because like there's times that I've had to lay stuff down that I don't understand. I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I'm like... I, I would just trust you. That's all he wants you to do. He says he'll fight your battles. So what you have to do is lay down those razor blades. Now, Brittany still carries, not really carries, but you have them. Yeah, I have them. So I've challenged her to go home tonight and throw them away because tonight we are surrendering this and we're going to put this. You may not be completely where you want to be, but you will be because that's what he promises. Mm -hmm. He wants to restore everything that Satan has stole from you. All those times of grief and hurt and pain, Jesus is, is going to restore that. Do you hear me? Amen. And there's joy coming because re, what was the verse that you that you read? Oh, Romans eight. Um, Romans eight eighteen. I think it was. Um, it's it, you know a lot of times we think joy doesn't come until we get to glory, but that's not the truth. Um, 
like the verse that says, um, you know, there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's renewed hope every day. Mercies are new every day. Carly was right. It's Romans eight eighteen. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to be revealed to us. Yes. So a lot of people think that that's just in heaven, but that's not. He wants to heal you here on earth. He wants to make sure, he wants you to become who he's created you to be for this good work. Would you have ever thought you'd have been sitting here? No. Me either. Mm-hmm. Never. Like this is just as foreign and uncomfortable and nervous as it is for it's you guys. It's not as to uncomfortable sit. as it used to be. It, it's not. <laughs> it's be- we're becoming more and yeah. more, but we're still like, I, I, I see Lisa grow, and she sees me grow, and I've seen, we see you all grow, and it's just, that's part, you have to have people around you who are constantly lifting you up and encouraging, because the world be, beats you down. Mm-hmm. You know, you, we literally are surviving in this world because we don't belong here. We're set apart. We're, we, have, we can't deal with our hurts and our struggles like the world does. We have to give everything to Jesus, and then he, he restores it. I mean, it's just amazing. And so let's talk about now how you got out of it. So what made you decide, because it wasn't me, it was not me. I was, I, was, I was being selfish and in my own little thing. But um, so what made you get out? And um, how long has it been since you cut? Well, it's been, um, it's been a year and two months, so, or no. Four months now so I stopped because I was tired of covering it I was tired of being a victim I was mm, I was good. tired of being like I felt weak I felt like I couldn't handle it and I just got tired like I was just just you tired knew, of doing it yeah. so you knew you had a better better right plan right you know and that's that's the thing like she's so much like me because I was bullied in school and a lot of, uh, when I started speaking truth, a lot of people didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And so they would take it out on Carly at school. And so she became bullied. Mm-hmm. And so she's so much like me because now she doesn't take anybody's stuff. You know, because right. you're because you're um, bullied, it makes you, I think it prepares you for ministry. I really do because then at that point you can stand up to everybody because their opinion really doesn't matter, you know. And I feel like if you wouldn't have went through those hard times, I mean, it was hard for me to watch these girls try to fight my daughter on a video. And, I mean, you've been through that, too. You are, like, ready to wear somebody out. But I understand that she had to go through things. I mean, there was people trying to fight me, too. Um, I wouldn't be able to stay. Yeah, I mean, like, you you really want to. You want to, like, get a hold of your kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll I'll handle mine, but you get a hold of yours before I do. You know, like, that's that's the attitude I had. That was hard for me. Um, I think she still... She blames me a lot for that because, you know, people would always say um, that I was racist and I was, and I'm like the least, you know, I have a Chinese daughter and, you know, um, the least racist person that you could ever meet. But bought diapers and all this stuff for the girls that were trying to jump me. And yeah, they would say, you know, you're racist. And Carly's like, I picked your Christmas gifts out. Like, you know, we bought your whole family Christmas. So it was just, it was so like, we knew we stood in truth. Uh, We knew who we were. Um, but yet everybody was saying all these horrible things. And so it made her junior year hell. It made my jun- her for me hell too. Cause I was, I was ready to, to tear that school up. But I understand now that she had to go through that. Even and now she's graduated. And now she's graduated. <laughs> up. And, um, on this podcast, it's just, it's just crazy. Cause they hear me talk about podcasts all the time, but like, they're like, ah, it's mom's talking about Jesus all the time, you know? <laughs> um, and that was hard too. Uh, seeing the transition of me go from dark, dark, dark to always want to talk about Jesus. And that was hard for everybody in my family. But like now we're all kind of like we're, we've healed everybody. Well, we're not totally healed, but like everyone around you, once you're healed, you heal everyone around you. And so mm-hmm. like she's, she's got people in her mind that she wants to help and talk to. And, but it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to do it. Um, okay. So you just got tired of it. So what about you, Brittany? And how long has it been? Um, the last time I cut was March 21, so it's been two years, okay. I think. Um, and that was right after my Nana had passed away. Yeah. Um, at that point, I was I didn't want to be a disappointment to anybody anymore because that's 
what she was in heaven, brain. so she was going to know what you were oh, doing. Yeah, yeah like, that's, that's kind of me with my dad. Yeah, and I, I mean, when my dad died, the Holy Spirit immediately called me out, and I, it was because I didn't want to disappoint my dad. Yeah, yeah, I've, I, you spend so many time, like so long, being a disappointment anyway. But I just got tired. You're not of, a disappointment, uh, Brittany. Well, you know that. I know that's what it, it is. But what we feel. What we feel, because that's Satan. Mm-hmm. He wants you to feel like a disappointment. So so you have to recognize when he comes. Like Carly would always have to have the radio on or somebody spend the night because if she was by herself, what did you feel happened? When I was by myself, I knew that I was going to cut just because I was like, I loved it because it took that pain away. It helped me go to bed, and I couldn't go to bed without doing it. And I just, whenever I'm by myself or without music, I just do you still feel that tendency is no not anymore I've kind of I'm learning to be by myself because I know that my best friend is now a senior and I'm graduated and I won't be able to be there and she won't be able to be there as much and and now I just I'm happy I don't really have those thoughts and I don't think I really struggle with that anymore and that's awesome I'm so happy for that so um so you just what what did you, you your grandmother after she passed away? So yeah, I, I I relate with that so well. And but that's what the Holy Spirit does. He uses whatever he needs to do use to draw yeah. you out of it. And you have to recognize. Um, I had a girl today on on TikTok reach out to me, and she she felt like she was so lost um, because she can't quit vaping. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I know I'm supposed to, but I'm just so lost. And I just encouraged her like, sister, your salvation is by what Jesus did. And but the Holy Spirit is, is wanting you to get healthy, and so you have to recognize that He looks at your health. He looks at every, I mean everything He has He that He's drawn you, so He's preparing you, yeah. and He's preparing Carly. I tell Carly, you know, we're talking about having this uh, women's conference, and I think we've set the date. My pastor is going to get back with me, but tentatively it is uh, September sixteenth and seventeenth. It's a Friday, and said, so "Don't you be looking at me like that. You can't do it." Oh, my goodness. I'm out of town. Are you out of town? Oh, oh I'm going to choke you. <laughs> so, anyway, so, yes. So, we're we're looking at having our women's uh, conference then. And I'm hoping that these two, at, the, at that, you know, that gives them a little bit more, you know, it's one thing talking to a camera. Mm-hmm. But then when you're actually in front of a bunch of people, it is a little bit more nerve-wracking. But um, I'm hoping that we can do a segment on self-harm and depression and, you know, kind of uh, talk about this more because I think that um, it needs to be talked about more because we just we're just turning a blind eye to it and it's not helping um, anything. Um, I think that if you wouldn't have sat down as long, I think maybe. And timing is everything. Yeah. God's time is everything. It's His timing. And because sure. um, I'll I'll think you know, well I probably wouldn't have done this, but then I, everything seemed to work perfectly. My dad's death. He called me out of it. It was just it was. He just he has knows. a plan. He does have a plan. And, and a lot of times our ugly is part of the plan. Yeah. People that leave your life, people that die, people that, you know, I was talking to Carly uh, earlier today and telling her that, you know, sometimes a person is only in your life for just a second to teach you something and, or for you to teach them something. And she has two cases that she feels that she was able to help somebody, even though they're not, they're not around each other anymore. But it was like... Um, they were hurt, and she was able to help them through their hurt, mm-hmm. you know, just for the month. So you you may not be in somebody's life all the time, but you just may be passing through, and something that you say or you encourage or you help them through the darkness, that's what your whole purpose was. You know, that was, I always say that we when we get saved, we have a piece of paper, and it has every good work that the Lord has planned for you, and it's got people's names on it. It's got things. I mean, we, we can't see it, but he has it planned for us. And I totally believe that people like that, when you walk into their life and you encourage them or you teach them something, it just gets marked off and your treasure gets added. I mean, I believe that totally. And so, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sad that you all felt that way, you know. Um, But, and, and I was even sick. I messaged Lisa and I was like, I feel like I could throw up. Because, you know, Carly and I had some hard discussions today, things that were hard for me to hear, but it was it was needed for her healing, and I needed to hear it. And so I just needed to man up and sit here and um, talk about it because there's somebody else's daughter that is out there who is cutting or needing help. And um, I just have a feeling like this is going to help so many people. Yeah, like, we're yeah. not even going to know. Mm-mm, mm-mm. 
Nope. Um, and so, like, l let, let's end with, like, what, like, a challenge from you to someone who's cutting right now. Um, it, it's not easy to talk about it to anybody. Um, my biggest advice at that time is just to write it down, get a journal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also, this is another part of what I've learned to how to cope. Um, is to get a rubber band and flick your wrist because mm -hmm. it distracts you from wanting to self harm and what it doesn't you don't want to pulls you out of those cut. thoughts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it trains your thoughts it actually. Literally snaps you back mm -hmm. into reality. I have yeah. panic panic attacks, and that's what my therapist told me. They were like, every time you have a thought, mm -hmm. because you are bringing pain to yourself, and it's like, oh, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to think about that. So it's like you do you have control. Of your brain more than what you believe yeah. you just if you don't have control of your of your thoughts then your mind can go wherever it wants to go but when you recognize the enemy and he's putting those thoughts of you're not good enough or you're a disappointment or nobody loves you or you know nobody will miss me or whatever that is the enemy and you have to capture that thought and, and release it um, Philippians 4 8 says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. So this is one of the verses, and I don't always get it right when I'm reciting it in my head, but when those negative thoughts are coming into my mm -hmm. head, I start saying these things. Yeah. And then it's Jesus. Yeah, know? yeah. So, um, And that's the thing about it, because we we're automatically negative, all of us are. Mm -hmm. We get up, we want to start complaining. And that's not, that's the, of the world. That's of the world. And so when we recognize that that's who we are, because, I mean, you know those people that are just always negative, that just can find the negative out of anything. Or even in fear and anxiety, this is something, that, that's usually what I, sometimes in the mornings, like the anxiety just hits me mm -hmm. and I start reciting this. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you do have to think on, if, you, if you're thinking on things above, which means heavenly things, meaning what God's promises are, um, how he's there for you. You know, we think he doesn't understand rejection, but I was telling Carly today, his brothers and sisters rejected him. Mm -hmm. They rejected that he was God. They did not follow him those three years. They thought he was demon-possessed. And Jesus appeared to James, his brother, after he rose from the grave. And then James became, and the sisters all became believers, and James became the main pastor of, of the church in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So, he knows about rejection. He knows about being lonely. Every one of his disciples left him alone to die on the cross except for John and his mom. And, of course, his mom knew because the Holy Spirit put the baby in there, and she knew that she had never, yeah. you know, um, had intercourse with anybody. So, so, I mean, it is he understands. And so you have to run to him. And and, and I, I, today on TikTok, I, I just said a little thing for, you know, if you are cutting right now. It's not going to stop cold turkey, you know. It's a process of you having to process it like this is not what God wants for me. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a struggle to lay it down. But eventually, you have to keep praying. And so I said, I was telling them every time they cut their self, say a prayer as you're doing it and say, Jesus, heal me from this. I don't want to do this because there was many times that I had taken a pill or I was high and I was laying there and I would, I would be out of my mind. I'd be like, Lord, I do not want to be this way. Please rescue me. And he heard me, and he came and rescued me. Find some scriptures that um, you can recite or just say when you're going through that. I know a lot of people think that's cliche and stuff, that's and right. they don't want to hear it. That's your battle. That's this what is, you battle this with. This is something that I do. That's your having, weapon. Yeah, that because is. Because you can't, you can't and that's what it up Jesus with, fought with, uh, with Satan. You have to come at him with the mm -hmm. word, and that's, that's what you're what doing. That's what Jesus fought um, Satan in the desert with mm -hmm. is the scripture. That's right. That's right. And nobody believes that. They think, oh, you know, Satan ain't really after me. He is after you. When you wake up in the morning, he is looking how to destroy your life. He, he says is. he's like a, 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 a lion. You know, he's waiting to... to um, come around and, and devour you. He hates you. He can't tell the truth. And so like, but we believe his lies and we don't believe Jesus. And uh, so you have to get scripture. We have scripture um, all over our house. Um, I have it all over my office uh, room. And then at work, it's in our bathrooms, like in our mm -hmm. girls and boys bathroom. I have, ver I mean, there's probably the 75, covered, yeah, yeah. 75 verse or papers, pages that I have stapled that when somebody walks into the bathroom, um, whether it be to pee or whether it be to cry, because we we do both as women, 
um, that they have the Word of God right at their fingertips because life is dark and Satan wants to destroy you. And so run to Jesus with all of this. And, you know, if you if you feel like you need to reach out and um, ask questions, um, we can always have these girls back on here. Um, I kind of like having her on here with me. And, um, <laughs> Good to it. Yeah. And so um, we can we can come back and, and refocus and, you know, maybe they're I think you all have done great with your nerves. Y'all haven't even acted nervous <laughs> no, on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday was Senior Sunday, and um, that was the first time Carly had to speak in public. <laughs> and at that moment when I saw it, like I didn't even hear him say, you're all going to tell what your future is. Mm -hmm. um, my husband's like, uh, Carly's about to freak out. And I was like, what? And so they handed her the microphone, and she was perfect. I didn't even hear. She did so good she, tonight. And, yeah. and so when she She's comes back to sit down, she was like, yes. <laughs> And I was like, Carly, but at that moment, I was able to show her that is the Lord preparing you to sit here at this table. And then this is preparing you to speak at the women's conference in September. And so, like, he, it's like a training thing. That's what he does. He, he gets us out of our yuck, and he trains us to say what he wants us to say. And it's just because you're hope for somebody else. And so, you have to understand that. And I just, I, I loved, I, I watched you because it's been kind of in my face. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been there. And, um... I, I just I just want you to see yourself like I see you and how God sees you. And you have to keep reminding yourself that you are God's masterpiece. But the best thing that I, I just didn't feel loved sometimes, and I love the verse that says, He has loved me with an everlasting love. That means that it is never ending. It will never end. There's not anything that you can do to disappoint Him. And in your darkest moments when we're in heaven, I believe you will see angels. You will see Shauna around you. I believe that. I, I mean, because we look at all the technology that we have right now. Can you imagine what heaven's like? I mean, you know, big screen TVs or whatever. And I believe we'll be able to see all of that. When we thought we were in our darkest and loneliest times is when most of the angels were down there. That'd so. be awkward. No, it won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with, you know, I've rolled in the, in the, on the ground and everything. And they're probably like, get up. You know, you're acting like a little child. So, yeah. so what would you... what? What would you charge people with? Like encourage them how to, how to start to get out. Like, is it tell somebody or is it just journal? Is it talk journal. talk with God I and think say journaling is a big part of it and praying. And honestly, for me, it was I I told myself, okay, this is gonna be the last time that I do it, and I broke the knife in half and I threw it away. Never picked it up again. And every time that I felt like that, I would go outside, go on a drive to get ice cream, like just do something, go downstairs just to get your mind to distract my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'd come back and I'd finally just, it would take me forever to fall asleep because I, like I said, I would do it every single night. It would take me forever, but I ended up doing it. So Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm so thankful to be on this part. So if you, if you have questions, you can list them down below. But give us a like because this will encourage others to watch this. This is something that has to get out because mm -hmm. it's, it's a dire need for people to understand that even a cheerleader that, you know, everybody just thinks, or, or even my child, because a lot of people are like, your daughter, you know, yeah. but you're, this, you're this godly woman. Listen, we're none of us. Are. The only reason I'm where I am is because of my mess. Mm -hmm. And and that's like with her, even though her story is hard to hear, I know that she had to have for that to happen to her so she can be right here where he needs her to be. And so um, instead of looking at your life like it's horrible and, and, and things like that, look at your life and, and, and start laying things down and saying, God, what I know this isn't what you wanted from me. You know, like, like I want to, to be out of this. And then, but you have to, you have to fight. You can't just lay down. And it's a fight every single day. It's a fight. It's but you're brave. I, yeah. It's something you're, I struggle with every single day. And it's not, I, eventually I think the thoughts will go away. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still there. But you just started all this, yeah. you know. So, um, not really, I'm not cutting, but just healthy thinking. Yes. And so, and that's very foreign oh, to, yeah. to Brittany. Because, uh, you know, when you're told by mean people um, that you're not enough and, and your words matter, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and time, I, I told Brittany earlier, time doesn't heal all wounds. It makes it takes the emotion out of it, but the hurt is still there. There's people who are carrying grudges from 20 years ago of something that somebody said. Um, time doesn't heal all wounds. It, you're just able to 
not be as upset about it when you talk about it or whatever. So you have to lay it at the feet of Jesus, and that's what we're doing tonight. And and I'm excited that this is documented so we can come back in just a couple months and see the growth and see God show up. Mm -hmm. And I know because obedience, that's where your treasure and your blessings come from. So when he calls you out of something and he asks you to lay it down, because you do feel like the Holy Spirit is calling you to to come out of all this. Do you? Mm -hmm. So that's where your blessing and your treasure is. And so because you are obedient and came on this tonight, I'm just telling you that's that's how it works. So I'm excited. So I hope this has helped you. I hope this has opened your eyes. If you're a mom like Lisa and I, or you're not a mom, you could be a sister or a friend, that it's opened your eyes to this because this is all new to us. We were we were like really trying to search, and we did we probably didn't get it all right. But you guys are the one that has has brought the the power to the table and and this is hope so if you feel hopeless you have two different scenarios i mean Brittany has sat down for i'm going to say 12 years because you've you've, you came out about that 12 13 year ready to to live (laughs) and um and so i'm excited to see where it goes so thank you all and we will see you next week 